Okay, folks, we're going to give an example of the advanced IPTA concepts. I went over in model number five. But first, we're going to look at how to set your expansion tool. Okay, I'm just going to plot this here for a second and then click on the tabs so you guys can see it. Now I'm just going to go through this rather brief. You can watch the video over it and pause. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, and there's the settings. All right, and we'll take this off. Now we're going to assume that we're running our numbers on the rules I gave you in model number five. So we have two days here delineating the search bike dealers range and Asian range and the entire range for flout. So what we're going to do is draw our range highs and lows. Okay, and this is our Central Bank Dealers range for the 20th of June. And the Asian range. And here, I gotta see what that low is. Low is 115.58. That's what this level's gotta be. And the high, 115.81. Nailed it perfectly. Okay, so we have 115.81 and a low of 115.58. So we're over 20 pips there. So we definitely meet the criteria for the range for using the Asian range. So we don't need to go to the flout. Uh, central bank dealers range. This high comes in at 1585. Same with this high here. So 1585 and the low coming in at 1571. So we do not get our 15 pips for central bank dealers range. So we have to elect to go with the Asian range. Okay, so we're going to plot our Fibonacci expansion tool. Okay, so you can see how this is done. You want to go all the way over to the farthest left point, okay? Drop our Fib on it. Draw it up to the highest point. And you're going to see this little thing here, okay? This tab. You want to double click on it until it highlights. And it's kind of hard to see. But then you're going to drag that right back down onto the level you just drew away from. Okay? And once it's there, you drop it and leave it alone. Now, you have to make sure that this is actually on the high. Okay? And it's a little bit of a finesse thing. Right there. Actually, it is dropping on the high. So we'll have our level right there. Because the fib is actually snapping to the high right there. Okay? So now we have our standard deviations based on model number five's criteria. Asian range, 20 pips or more. 
15 pips or more for the central bank dealers range, which it was 14 pips here, so we're one pip short. So we elect to use the Asian range. And now that projects it on the upside. And same thing we do in reverse. So now again, you start all the way on the furthest left point, drop it down. Okay, and then you're gonna grab that same range and drag it right back up. to the high. Okay, so we have our standard deviation here. Off by one or two pips here, it's good, it's fine, it's not important. But we have our deviations. Now watch what happens when we do the same thing on the very next day. Borrow one of these lines here, copy it, and drag it over here. So we have our Central Bank Dealers range. I have to make sure I get this high here. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. Okay, and then we will copy that to here. away you can see we're less than 15 pips the low coming in at 1601 and 1614 so we're under our threshold for utilizing the central bank dealers range for this particular day and then the high on this candle here for Asian range is 1618 and the low coming in at 1601 again same thing we're short on the 20 pips requirement, but for completeness sake, we're just going to have the range delineated here. Right there, okay? So now, when we have to use the flout, this is what you can use, the central bank dealer's range tool that I've calibrated for using the Fibonacci expansion tool for this purpose. You're going to first take your standard FIB retracement and you put it on the high and the low of the entire flout okay. And what you're looking for is the midpoint equilibrium, okay? Because what you're going to do is you're going to drop your Fibonacci expansion tool on this particular level here and drag it up to here. Because what you're doing is you're measuring the flout in 50% grades. So by grabbing our Fib, again, expansion tool, we're dropping it, anchoring off of this vertical line here, delineating 0, 100. We're going to drive our fib up to that high here. And we're going to grab the midpoint level that the expansion tool uses. And we're going to drop it right on top of the equilibrium price point. Right there. There. Okay. So now it gives us a standard deviation. And we have to make sure, again, it's lined up with the high right there. Okay. So now what we have is we have two days doing the calibration based on model number five. 15 pips central bank dealers range minimum doesn't do it. We have to go to Asian range, 20 pips or more. If it doesn't do it, then we use the flout. In this case, we have to use the flout. If we take the standard deviations here you can see how seven and four are very close to one another what price level is it 116.73 okay so that's what we're, we're looking for now in this day here all this i'm going to take the 
Central Bank Dealers range levels off for clarity in this Fib 2. Okay, and see this swing high here? Right in here? Price rallies through that. We would use our expansion ideas in terms of looking for sweeps on stops by 10, 20, and 30 pips. The high is 116.39, so 10 pips above that would be 16.49. 20 pips would be 16.59, and 16.69 would be 30 pips. And then we have another swing high. See this? See that? We have a high, lower high, lower high. So the high above this is 116.42. So grades of 10, 20, and 30, the extreme would be 16.72. Okay? 16.70, we have an expansion and projecting 116.73. And we have a swing high with an expansion running for liquidity for in this extreme, it would be 30 pips. We're looking for 116.72. So 116.72, 116.73 with these levels here. Also, blending time. Okay, The high that it hits on this candle here. Is the beginning of the London Open Kill Zone. We have a high of 16.73, so we're off by one pip based on the expansion. And this high comes in at the towards the end of the London Open kill zone uh, by 15 pips. It goes to 16.76. Okay, so we're off by three pips projection there, and it's also just outside of the kill zone by 15 pips. Nonetheless we see that there is a great deal of precision blending the element of time, price, and IPTA. We're doing all of these ideas here and blending the projections and, and looking for confluences between two specific days back to back using the criteria I gave you in model number five. Okay, When we see elements of overlapping with time kill zones and then we're looking for the expansion overlaps like we're doing here you get a lot of symmetry and you get precision okay so my request for you tonight is go through your charts and look through do about uh, a month's worth of your dollar or cable okay and come up with your own discoveries as far as what was an overlap what was the criteria but also keep in mind that we're always using that 10 20 and 30 pip sweeps for liquidity so if price is expanding every time we find a short-term high always on a 15 minute time frame that's our bellwether chart look for overlaps of running on liquidity because we have this old high back here price does expand through it but then it creates new in the same day that we're trading new swing highs so every time there's a new swing high and the expectation is we're reaching higher Always do your math on 10, 20, and 30 expansions because that's the grade that if is going to be re reaching for for liquidity purposes. Do some study. Do your homework. You can pick whatever pair you want, but do at least one full month. That means Monday through Friday on four weeks worth of data and find what you can see in terms of the overlaps. And you'll see right away that IPTA is in fact doing these very things and moving very methodically. Okay, folks, good afternoon. So we're looking at the dollar index here. Obviously, it's um, very nice to see price action being delivered as we anticipated going into this week. We are watching the order block in here that we calibrated to 94.30 as a low end. In fairness, I was giving you a range between 94.40 and 94.30. Uh, it went down to a low of 94.29. If I'm not mistaken, here it is on this candle. Yeah, 94.29. And we are looking for a run above the equal highs in here. Okay, so that comes in at 95.53. If I can get to pop up here. I have it showing at 95.52, but the high comes in at 95.53 and 95.53.
Okay. I'm going to talk about the effects of how the dollar index, when we have a condition like this, I got a lot of emails from you guys that are in the charter membership asking what it is I did specifically to get those numbers we saw this week that were really, really uh, sensitive and accurate. So it's a result of the things that you see on the chart now, obviously the PD arrays and using the IPTA data ranges. So having an idea in terms of watching the market in this scale, like we're looking for the 20 day range, the high and low, obviously we targeted the buy stops and we said if we lost the low in here, mean threshold, if you will, the sell stops would be targeted for the week, and then we would be aiming for this. Initially, we were watching the 94.30 to 94.40 level for sensitivity relative to the bullish order block in here. And I mentioned because of all this wicks, we would not necessarily require and would be better if the dollar was unwilling to go to the mean threshold of this down close candle or bullish order block, which was the reason why if we saw the mean threshold broken on the downside, then we would be bears looking for the sell stop liquidity runs, especially to the equal lows here. Okay. So I gave you the context. I gave you the framework as to which, which side of the market we're going to work on. The, Level of 95.65, I'm going to give you a couple things today that led to my picking that level. Okay, obviously it goes without saying it's above the equal highs at 95.53. Again, it's relative to these two highs here. But I want to drop down into a 15 minute time frame and kind of like flesh out the dollar index with this move in mind here. So let's go to a 15 minute chart. Okay, so we have our chart here with equal highs. So we know prior to the run up in here, this is going to be a very clear area of manipulation. I'm going to run those stops. So we're going to put a little bit of a delineation here. Okay, so we know that we want to see a run above these equal highs. Okay, so we're using just a round number 9540. And we have to incorporate our higher time frame 9553 level. I couldn't have done that any better. <laughs> Dropped it right on there. And we're going to put our daily dividers. Okay, so we know there's going to be a run above these equal highs. By itself, that's enough. We also anticipated a run above the daily highs that made the equal highs 95.53, as I just showed you on the daily chart. So how do we get to 9565? Well, we're going to incorporate a couple of things here. I want you to look at the daily dividers here with our 20 and 4, which is going to be our midnight and beginning point for the central bank dealers range. Okay, so inside that range, I want you to focus on these two price points because those price points, seen with this body's high and this body's low, okay, because we're focusing on the, the volume, okay, this is the lowest opener close and highest opener close in the range. Okay, so we're using that to frame out our standard deviations and intraday projections. So we have our 95.53 level on. We have 95.40 as shown here. So we're looking for several reasons to go above 95.40, we have equal highs from the 18th, then we have the 95.53 equal highs on the daily chart, and also anticipating that run off of the 94.30 low, anticipated for the dollar's price range relative to its weekly chart. 
we look at the projection of 9565, that actually comes to 25 pips above the 9540 equal highs. So it's not a range sweep of 10, 20, or 30 pips above the equal highs at 9540. But think about this for a second, okay? Because this is how I did it. If we know that the equal highs on the daily are likely to be swept, okay, and price is below that level here, okay? So as we entered into the 19th of July, we're looking for a reason to go up to sweep a level that is defined at 95.53 relative to the Forex LTD demo count, okay? So if the expectation is that we're going to go above that 95.53 level, what can we do for calibration? Do we use the 95.50 level, which would be below it, or do we round up to 95.55 or 95.60? Well, if we're below price and we anticipate price wanting to sweep above it, then it's natural for us if we're looking for price to want to make a run above that 95.53 level, then it's natural for us to want to take that level and round it up to the nearest 5 or 0 level. In this case, it would be 95.55. Okay, so at 95.55, now we have our level that IPTA should reach for. Why are we rounding it up? Because I know sometimes I teach that you want to round down to get to the objectives. Not down in the sense that a uh, directional, but in terms of the range. We want to go to the smallest potential range. But if we're going to be running highs, okay, you want to be looking for the potential swing that will go above it. In this case, we had 95.53. So my thinking was, well, if it's going to go up to 95.53 with the expectation we're going to reach for stops, then I'm just going to calibrate my range to 95.55, as you see here. Then... We can start looking for stop sweeps of 10, 20, and 30 pips above that. Well, above 95.55, what's 10 pips above that? 95.65. Okay, 95.65, a 10 pip run above this high. So if we take that, We get the actual high of the day at 95.65. Now that's what I was anticipating in here. Okay, as we were running up, I was watching these equal highs, but because we have the daily equal highs delineated with 95.53 that we now calibrated to 95.55 because the expectation is we're reaching above it. Okay, so for completeness sake, if we were in a bear scenario, and we are looking at, say, for instance, a level of 94, 97, okay? And we were above price and we we're reaching for it to go lower, anticipated a sweep. What would we use in that regard? 94, 95, okay? Because it's going to be a reach below. So it, basically, a calibrator level to the nearest five or zero level. In that case, I'm giving you the, the opposite end of how we can use this or the different different side of the uh, continuum, if you will. So, so we have these levels in here as delineated with these arrows. So now what I'm going to incorporate is the intraday standard deviations. Okay, using the range as explained in the mentorship. And you can see how we go up to 95.65. Standard deviation of 4. And IP to data range high of day. Beautiful delivery, perfect, right on the mark. Okay. We also have the run of 10 pips above a calibrated level relative to the daily chart which was 95.55 from 95.53. So again, the expectation is we are looking to reach above it. So we calibrate our level up. Okay. Now, if we are looking for a trade and we're long and we want to exit, then we would round down 
for our level of exit. Okay, uh, the bulk of our, our uh, position would be taken off early by rounding down. But when we're looking for a run on stops, we always expand the range because the nature of that uh, characteristic in a stop sweep is it reaches above an old high or it reaches below an old low. Okay, so you have to expand the range in that regard. So with the IPTA data ranges expanding up, okay, and the time of day, in here we have the New York Open. What day of the week is the 19th of July? I'll give you a little bit of help. <laughs> Thursday. Okay, we have Thursday right here. So you have Thursday in a bullish week. It's gone up. So Thursday, New York session, what does the mentorship teach you? That there's probably going to be a reversal at the New York Open. I think that pretty much happened on Thursday. And we wouldn't run for the equal lows here on the 18th. We swept those and then we went to consolidation. Okay. And if we go into our notes for the 19th as well, by adding that, you can see we have the IPTA projection on the low of the day seen here okay and again we're using the range defined by the highest body and the lowest body and projecting that down and we get our levels as seen here okay so we have several confluences as taught by the mentorship and especially price action model number five also notice that because of the precision of this, we have the 19th New York Open. We have that level coupled with the Thursday day of, day of the week phenomenon. So we're anticipating a potential market reversal profile in New York. Exactly 10 pips above 95.55, which is a calibrated daily level. Calibrated from 95.53, we have that overlapping with our standard deviation of four. Okay, so we have that, and you're probably looking at this over here because I'm doing both. I'm doing two of them in there. The reason why I'm doing uh, two is I want you to see the overlap of using the high and the low here on two different measurements. So you can see there's absolutely zero uh, funny business there's no you know making it fit type thing and plus I shared it on Twitter <laughs> I put it on there so you, everyone saw it there was no excuse not to see it we also saw the as the dollar index ran into this high we anticipated the potential reversal as outlined in the mentorship commentary for Monday of this past week and we got it Okay, so that came to fruition as shown on the daily chart here. Beautifully delivered. So at this moment, we're going to be looking for a run to the sell stops here and below here for the coming week. Okay, but I want to go to the cable. Okay, and we have a virgin chart here, nothing on it, completely naked. And I'll add the daily dividers in here. Okay, we have the low formed on cable at the New York Open again market reversal profile okay so we have our standard deviation overlaid on the cable and we have our level right in here lines beautifully with our low of the day okay great there perfect delivery the low on this particular candle comes in at 29.59 
standard deviation projection. Price has a re reaction, comes back down cons into consolidation. And I'm going to zoom in right in here, okay? And we're going to look at something in here. And we're going to talk about order blocks, you know, calibrating bullish order blocks and the like with everything I'm going to say. You reverse it for bearish order blocks. But before I do it, take a quick glance of the projections on the upside, okay? We have relatively equal highs in here. See that? Very, very flat price action. The high comes in at 31.18. Okay, 31.18. And a run above that would be reasonable. Okay, so while we're down here, going into the new day, we also have the equal highs here as I shared on Twitter. So this is the one I shared on Twitter publicly. Then we have this level over here. And then we also have a very, very, very small little gap in here. And we also have a gap in here. Okay, you see that? Let me zoom in. Okay, right in here. Notice this candle, we went up, closed, we gapped up. Went up a little bit, made a small little body, and then was open and straight down. So there was really no price action to provide an up candle in here. We just had a bunch of wick. Okay, now watch this. We're going to put this level on. Right there. And the high, I'm sorry, the open rather. The point on the candle is 131.41, exactly where it's laying at now. So we'll have that on our chart. So price, let me zoom in here. In this order block, down close candles, prior to this big run up, so we had displacement. Elephant stepped into the children's pool, if you will. So we have displacement there. We have a little gap right in there. The close, 29.98. And the next candle is open, 29.97, okay? There's one pip difference in that. In this whole series of candles, normal free tutorial folks would take that and say, okay, these are all basically a single bullish order block. And it would mark off the mid-range of that, okay? I don't do that here. I'm looking at that one pip difference, okay, and I think it's going to go to that price point only. Price comes down in Asia on the 20th and has a low of 129.96, okay? 129.96 is the low, and the open, which is the bottom of that one pip gap, is 129.97, so we were off by one pip. But look at the sensitivity there. See that? It rallies up, clears the equal highs, and then trades right back down into this level at the, at the open of this candle. And then we have a run. As price starts to rally in the London session, price reaches up into that gap that I just outlined outside of the normal range. Okay, so we are going back a little bit, looking for imbalances. Price goes exactly to 131.41. Okay, notice it's also standard deviation 3. And it's also a standard deviation seen. I gotta have to take that horizontal line off. There you go. So we have our projection here. Note the time of the day, it makes the high 1800. And you learned this in the free tutorial stuff. 1800 generally is like the last bit of the daily range, unless it's like FOMC minutes or something like that, where we can see some flurry of action around the 1800 hour going into bond close. But you can see a beautiful delivery of price action shown with the standard deviations, the overlapping from previous day. So IPTA is referring back to these same price points, folks. It's undeniable. You can see it. It's happening there. Also notice that we also have in the London session, we have another gap right in here. 
Okay, but the body opens. We wick down, but we leave that opening and that there's no body there. Okay, so as price starts to move away, price comes back down into what the gap. But are we looking to fill the gap, or is it something else we have to look at? The order block to the left, that last down close candle. So now this is where we're going to use the open. The open is one thirty zero seven. Okay, one thirty zero seven. The low on this candle comes in at 130.07. Perfect. Comes down, goes into what would be reasonable for the gap, but we're going to go right to the open. So why am I not using the wick here, Michael? It's because we're using this as a draw to rebalance that we have to use the order block itself because that's where the actual IPTA uh, array is going to be um, reached for. Okay. In other words, that's the data it's reaching for. That happens right here. Then we get that nice reaction immediately off of that and expands on the upside, reaching for the buy stops, as indicated on Twitter. Now, I didn't give you anything on Twitter beyond that because if I give too many things on Twitter, it can be studied. And, you know, I was smart enough to figure it out, too, <laughs> after seeing many, many examples of it. So I don't want to give it away for free. So. We see the 13141 level delivered relative to several different things in here. And I wanted you to kind of like go through your charts and look for examples of that when we have a buy that has an order block and there's a gap in here. Okay. Watch how many times it goes to that price point. You ever seen an order block that has like its mean threshold violated but still doesn't go below the low of the order block? Many times you're going to find it has this event in here. Okay, so have that in your notes. Um, I don't know when I'll talk about it again, but when it pops up and gives us an example of it, um, I'll certainly do so. But in your notes, you absolutely have to have this in your section for your order blocks because this is what makes me decide on whether or not I want to be buying at the open or the wicks high or selling at the wick low or selling at the um, open of the candle that would be a bearish order block. Okay. Theory. And it's a introduced short term strategy where I introduce the standard deviations and such. And I give you rules in that model and when to pick the flout and when to pick central bank dealers range and when to use the Asian session. So we don't need to go through all that. That's already been taught. So I want to take you into a market. Australian dollar this is our daily chart versus U.S. dollar. And we're. Inside that seasonal tendency that was bearish, okay, we're looking at the daily chart here. We have a nice up close candle, and it's trading up into a breaker. High, low, higher high, trades up into the breaker there. So we have a bearish bias, and we have a up close candle in a market that's expected to go lower. And we'll say it's likely to draw down into this area here in longer term, but again, we're just using this bias or these relative equal lows here as a means for determining the expansion where we're looking for. So we're expecting the next day to start working lower, but for intraday, where do we aim for? Well, we can start with this daily low. Okay, so we're going to look at that daily low as an objective for a short if we can get all the confluences. All right, so here we have a 15-minute time frame. I mentioned 15 minute time frame is kind of like the bellwether. So again, go through your model for model number five and you'll hear all that detail as well. But we're focusing primarily on a run below this low. Okay, so we want to know, can we get a setup that sets up a short that takes out this low and how far can it go using model five precision elements with the standard deviations? So that's our pool of liquidity that we're aiming for. And obviously, with the benefit of hindsight, we can see it's over here. But we're going to put some math into it. Okay, so we're using the flout. And I went through all the rules. You can go through that for yourself. Uh, and this is what we're going to be utilizing. So we're using a high to the low. You always split that range in half, and then you can do your standard deviations set up that way. Or if your Fibonacci set up in such a way where if you're taking the high to the low, the deviations or whole number deviations. It's not a matter of exactly how many number up or down. 
it's looking for a confluence. And that's one of the things I was trying to impress upon you in the model number five. So it's a confluence of not just one day, but at least two days worth of confluences within the constructs of a bias. Okay, so in layman's terms, I'm going to walk you through it. We're looking for how this day went up higher. We're expecting it to go lower because it's inside a seasonal tendency. We're expecting for that daily low to be taken out, and we want to use some precision elements to get us in sync with that. So I'm measuring the high to the low, and then what I'm doing is I'm determining that 50% level between that high and that low. Then I'm dropping the fib from that to that, so it gives me the 50 levels. Okay, and the only reason why I'm doing it that way, and it may be confusing to you, is I want to have smaller standard deviations instead of like what would be otherwise from here to here. What I'm getting is from here to here, that's 50, so it gives me smaller increments of standard deviation. So you can see we have a standard deviation of negative 5 there. So we're looking for that in time. You can see we didn't get it. That's fine. We're going to work on that. Remember, standard deviations are within three to five pips. That's, in my opinion, the realm of error, okay, where it can be within that vicinity and still be good enough. And the standard deviation on the upside, same way. Looking for 74, 89, four pipettes. And the high actually comes in at 74, 93 and a half. So it's within five pips, okay? The next trading day, and this is where we're trying to take the setup, same thing, we're using flout, using the rules with the standard deviations from central bank dealers range, Asian range, and flout. So same thing here. I'm showing you the sessions, London Open, New York Open. So we're looking for key turning points. We're looking for sell setups. What's the bias? It's bearish. We're aiming for a run below that low here. And we anticipate what? London creates an important high or a high of the day. And then it expands down into New York Open and potentially even later into London Close. But we're using these two time zones, if you will, in terms of kill zones. And then we have the element of the London Open price action. So we want to get some measurements on this trading day that would give us the objectives for that fair value gap. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, it trades up into that fair value gap there, and we're expecting price to trade down. How far? Well, obviously, we're going to look for it to go below there. But let's add some precision to it. Standard deviation here to here, measured down. We have flat calling for negative 1.5. The level comes in at 73, 94, and 4 pipettes. That's what we're noting here. And if you look at the previous day's standard deviation, it's 73, 90, and 7. So again, within 5 pips variance. So we could split that range in half between this level and this level and kind of aim for the midpoint. Or we can just take that level here plus the spread. And that would be fine as an objective. But... We can take the swing projection idea that I've taught you, high to low, and that projection of negative 1 comes in at 73, 92, and 1 pipette. That is the exact low of that candle, 73, 92, and 1 pipette. So we have a confluence of factors coming together within the New York kill zone, giving us a precise entry precise exit, targeting initially the sell side liquidity over here. So when you walk through your day and you're looking for short-term trades or day trades and you're trying to determine what it is you're trying to aim for, obviously you have to have the bias. Okay, It's going to be framed on the higher time frame. When you're looking for these setups, you can use the London Open or New York Open kill zone, preferably if you can, try to do London Open. But if you don't have opportunity to be trading it, at least use London Open's kill zone setup as a 
kind of like a bias, you know, support to bias. If you were to use the New York setup, it would be this high, low, optimal trade entry. Right in here, there's your optimal trade entry. And you would look for a lower time frame area in here for fair value gap or something that would be a premium array. And it sells off, and you can use the same targets based on all the things I've outlined here. So when you're using standard deviations, this is one of the hardest things that the students have been able to come to grips with because there's variables here. Okay, so when we go through these standard deviations, you're you're doing multiple ones, so you're getting an idea where it could potentially go, and then you're going to have to determine which one you're going to pick. Now, I've shown many examples of this. Okay, and if you go through your old data and you back test, you'll see many instances of precision elements like this that it's undeniable. But the problem is you want it to be easy where it's just A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. It always works the same way. It, it's not going to be like that, okay? It's never going to be just that simple. So there's going to be a variable of measuring the wicks like I'm using or using the bodies. And what you're doing is you're looking for which one of the ranges between the low and the high is giving you the most confluences between the previous day and the day you're trading. This is a Tuesday, so you're also building in the idea that maybe there was a high form for the week here on Monday, and then on Tuesday you're looking for the you know, rollover and continuation because we already had a nice move away from that. So there's a lot of factors, obviously, with model number five, but you can start to incorporate these elements in your other trades. If you're using another trading model or if you're you know, back testing, always try to do these measurements. Okay, And what will happen is, is you'll start getting better at it because I didn't learn how to do this to sit one and done and knew how to do it. It's not, it's not how it worked. It took a lot of years of fine-tuning this so that way I'm looking for certain things to repeat. You're not going to know all the time. Okay, All you need to know is a rough idea on the trades that you're looking to take if it's going to be based on like intraday, either scalping or intraday, that's the only benefit, really, I think Model 5 is going to give you. Otherwise, you don't really need these things. There's other things that provide just as well, you know, higher time frame objectives that you don't need to be this precise. And if you're worrying about trying to be this precise, and that's like the only definition of you being successful here, you're missing the point, okay? If anything, this communicates the markets operate under an algorithm. And they refer to specific times for measurements for standard deviations above and below the market price within the context of the bias that would be expected, bullish or bearish, okay? And then bringing in the elements of time. So the short here at the fair value gap, do you need this fit from here to here to give you that low? No, because you already know logically that you have relative equal lows over here. That's a first partial. And then below that low here, which is previous day's low, is sell side. So as soon as it hits that low and goes below it by one pip, that would be enough for you to consider an objective to, to cover the short. Do you need to be trying to get out at that price? No. But learn to study your previous moves, either by back testing or using it with your current trade, to see if these ideas pan out. Over time, your precision and the appreciation for how these markets price and book will obviously increase over time. All right, so hopefully you found this one insightful. Until next time, be safe.